for, for this next Sunday. Uh, but I had a few things that I wanted to start with. Um, if you have any need whatsoever, please don't hesitate to call one of the pastors. We're here for you for prayer, for anything that you might need, for comfort, for peace. Uh, please do not hesitate to call us. I'm just so glad to be able to be with you today in this way. It's a little bit different if we have been progressing. We're trying to improve just a little bit each time that we tape so that we can present this to you. And I want to shout out, a big shout out, to Tyler Pummel, who has been helping us out with this taping. Um, none of us are really techie, and so we're very blessed to have him with us. So now, I would like to um, have Pastor Doug join me for the call to worship. Come into God's presence with joy. In God, we have an inheritance that is imperishable. Come into God's presence with hope. In Christ, we have an inheritance that cannot be defiled. Come into God's presence with longing. In the Spirit, we have an inheritance that never fades. Come into God's presence with love. In God, we have an inheritance that brings new life. Shall we pray? Unto you, O Lord, we lift our hearts. Unto you, O Lord, we lift our hands. And unto you, we lift our voices. And we ask for grace sufficient to see us through this time of difficulty, uncertainty, and fear. We ask, O Lord, for grace sufficient to see us through the new things that we're discovering in life the value of life, the hope of life, the hope of giving and sharing, the hope of being part of community in different ways than we've ever imagined. Oh Lord, we pray for your grace sufficient to help us to love one another in the, uh, at, at home on a regular and continual basis when uh, relationships may get testy and tried. We ask for grace sufficient to see beyond the testiness uh, of, of life together in new and different ways. Lord, we are mindful that you are embracing this entire world, that there is no place deprived of your presence so you can be somewhere else. And no one is deprived of your presence so you can be with someone else. That you are everywhere under all circumstances. And that in that being everywhere, we know that we can trust you with our needs, with the things that are on our hearts and on our minds, with our loved ones who are ever uh, on our minds and with the news we hear from all over the world. We know your grace is sufficient. Your strength is always there. Your presence is never in doubt. And that which you have given to us, we can share with others. And that gives us strength abundant to see the day through long. And now, Lord, as we gather perhaps around our TV sets or computers with family and friends, we share together the prayer that you taught us one and all. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Blessings abundant.
first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Sorry, went too far. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. Can I get that over? The scripture for today is from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hand, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said, Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. As we open up into this section of scripture, we come across the disciples still in hiding. They are behind locked doors, still fearful and still afraid of the Jewish leaders. Didn't the disciples believe Mary? Didn't they believe her when she came to them with the news that Jesus had risen? In just the previous verse, in 18, Mary had went to them and said, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Apparently, they were still in shock over the events of the last week. How could their teacher be alive? He had been crucified and buried. John had been there at the foot of the cross and had witnessed it all. Still, they allowed their fear to overcome their faith. When Jesus appeared to the disciples, he had to greet them twice. They were so stunned by his appearance among them that they didn't even respond to that first greeting. The disciples must have thought they were seeing a ghost. Jesus' greeting, peace be with you, was a traditional greeting used at the time. It wasn't until Jesus had shown them his wounds, the scars in his hands and his side, where he had been pierced by a Roman spear, that they finally believed. Then, and only then, did 
they realized this was truly their beloved teacher. The excitement and joy would have filled the room. It was then that Jesus greeted them again. But this time, coming from Jesus, the greeting meant a whole lot more. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. The second greeting not only brought them a holy peace, but it also directed them to continue the work that God had sent Jesus to do. At this point, Jesus breathed on each of them. He bestowed on them a special blessing meant for those who were gathered in the room. He imparted the Holy Spirit upon each of them. Through the blood breath of our Lord, the disciples were gifted with eternal spiritual life. The breath of God breathed life into his first creation of man in the very beginning. Now, the breath of Jesus was given to those who had been his closest friends over the last three years. They had traveled with him as he taught and as he healed. They had sat with him many times and listened to his parables. They had broken bread with him, laughed with him, and had grieved seriously his death. But now he was back. He had risen from the dead and was standing among them. That alone was enough to celebrate. But now he had gifted them even further with this gift of the Holy Spirit. Just exactly what was Jesus' mission for them? He was sending them to do out, to continue to do the work that he had started, to go out among the people and teach them about God. But now they had even a stronger testimony, the testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They could share all of his teachings because they had been there. They could tell of his love and they could tell about his ultimate sacrifice on the cross where he paid for each of our sins. They could heal the sick. They could baptize and bless new believers. They were to preach the good news about Jesus so that the sins of the people might be forgiven. They did not have the power to forgive sins. Only God can do that. But they were given the privilege of telling others that when they accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior, their sins would be forgiven. I would like to leave you with one final scripture from John 14, 27. Jesus had blessed them with his peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the Lord gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. How many times in life have we heard something like I'm about to say or how many times have we said it? I will believe it when I see it. When I see it with my own eyes, I will believe it. Seeing is believing. We won't know until we get there. Chances are we've all said these things, at least one of them. We definitely have heard these things. Yet when we think of the disciple of Thomas, our first thought is negative. He is a doubter. He doubted Jesus. Despite all the good he did in his life, before the resurrection and after the resurrection, we remember him for this one weak moment. I hope none of us are remembered for one mistake in our life. Chances are in my life the problem would be everyone would have trouble deciding what that one mistake to bring up constantly would be because there's been a few of them. We criticize for questioning. But if handled correctly, questioning can be a good thing. Provenient grace teaches us that God loved us first. But knowing that love, knowing the 
that somebody is interested in us should make us curious. When somebody is interested in us and, and they want to pursue a relationship with us, whether it be a romantic interest or whether it be a friendship, we are curious to at least look into it, to explore it, to learn more about the other person. Same thing with our relationship with God. He knows us first. He loves us first. We need to question what's going on. We need to be inspired to do work, to learn. When we do our studying and we learn, we get closer. When we know more, we are better equipped to handle the relationship and to teach others about the relationship. But do remember, there is a difference between asking questions and just having doubt. Through His grace, we are inspired to ask the questions, inspired to study, inspired to worship to learn more. But when we have questions and we don't do those things, think of what that turns us into. We end up saying, where's your proof? Where's your evidence? We harden our hearts and we fail to let the endless potential of God's loving grace into our lives. Allow doubt to motivate you. To motivate you to ask questions, to learn but do not allow it to become a permanent way of your life. In verse 29, Jesus says, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Thomas traveled with Jesus. Jesus, in his ministry, included many miracles. Thomas saw these things with his own eyes, yet he doubted the witness of the other disciples regarding the resurrection. Now, none of us alive today traveled with Jesus when he was in this world. None of us saw him feed 5,000 people. None of us saw Jesus walk on water. None of us saw him turn water into wine. None of us saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. Or many of the other miracles that are recorded in the Bible. Or some that aren't even recorded. But it is written so that we have something to study, something to believe. So when we have those doubts, when we have those questions. Blessed are those who have not seen, but believe. But when we have faith, and we keep looking, we see. We see it in the love of others. We see it in the love of others through this current crisis we're in. We see it now in the people that we care about that are in our church families. We cannot tell you how many times we've heard from people wanting to do something during this crisis, wanting to be a part of our services online, wanting to, to send us something, wanting to get together. That is grace. That is seeing Jesus. We see him when we search for the answers to our questions. We will see him then. Again, we will not see him when we allow that doubt to just be the stopping point of our learning process. When we ask, we receive. Remember, ask and you shall receive. 
If you have questions, just a little doubt, ask. You shall receive. But you have to do your part as well. You have to look. You have to study. Do not doubt. Do not doubt. We serve a risen Lord. One who extends His grace to us every day. You can read about it every day. You can see it every day. Seek the answers to your questions, but never doubt His loving grace for each of us. If I could give a little preface to my portion of uh, dealing with this scripture, I would simply say that this section that uh, Doug, Betsy, and I are dealing with is something like the Gettysburg Address of Scripture. Few words, brief statement, profound understanding, profound results, and very profound enduring significance. As the Gettysburg Address was, so this statement concluding or nearly concluding the Gospel of John is, it is a profound statement of faith, hope, and the resilient, enduring significance of knowing Christ as your Savior. Now I'm going to deal with the last two verses uh, fairly well. The late Justice Anthony Scalia said, addressing a group of Knights of Columbus in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, there is no good reason to reject an eyewitness testimony offhand. An eyewitness, while perhaps not totally conclusive,
Gospel of John declares the purpose of John and declares, I think, the purpose of the Gospels, the entire Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke as well. These things are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of God, and by believing we might have life in his name. In just a few words, we have a fearless eyewitness testimony, the purpose of the gospel and the clear reason to believe. Life comes by faith in Jesus Christ and none other. There is also in these few words an affirmation that God can be trusted and there is hope for the entire future. There is hope for the entire world. Jesus belongs to all of us, belongs to the entire world. These are the words of eternal life. Peter said it once back in the 6th chapter of John when 70 people had deserted Jesus. This affirms Jesus' words to Timothy. Blessed are you because you have seen. And that's important. That's the disciples. That's significant. Blessed are you because you have seen. But there's also a blessing in this, in this to us. In Jesus' statement, he blesses Christians for all time, for all eternity, all over the world, all at once. When he says, blessed are you who have not seen, yet believe anyway. That's all of us. After a matter of speaking, this is a profound and incredibly significant statement of Christian faith and experience. And we need to read it on a continual and regular basis, share it with friends and neighbors, and look to it for strength, for faith, for hope, in these times that we share together right now. Let's close together in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we want to see you. We long to see you. We know that you are there. We see you everywhere in our lives. We just have to look for you. And what a glorious blessing it is when we do see you. Help us not to doubt, O oh Lord. Help us to use that doubt for motivation to get those questions answered. For we know that you are there, ready to reveal your loving grace to all of us. Ready for us to reach back. Be with us during this time, O oh Lord, this crisis. Again, we look forward to the day that you put it down and we get back to seeing one another and worship in our pews and in our churches. But again, when we come back, we want to come back stronger because during this time, O oh Lord, we see you and that inspires us when we see your love. 